Actually, it's due Thursday, I think, to be precise. So not, is, not it, is it next week? This week. Uh -huh. Now, let's look at the syllabus. To Wednesday of indicated week. This is week 11, which starts 11-5, do project design. All right. Um, our schedule, as far as the chapters go, has gone a little haywire, but we'll, we'll catch up. Uh, as far as where the sample project plan is, if you go under semester project, the very last thing is the sample plan. Now, keep in mind, it, you know, your sample, your, your plan doesn't have to like look exactly like this, um, but it gives a sense of like the level of detail and the, the amount of information that I want um, as far as that goes. Um, so, so take a look at it. Um, the one section I say I don't have a prototype because I didn't feel like making a prototype, um, you don't have the luxury to do that. <laughs> let me rephrase, let me rephrase that. You do have the luxury to do that. But you'll be graded accordingly, so, um, so, so do, be, do be aware of that. It is funny when, when I post examples and I, I get them back like mistakes and all, <laughs> you know. Sometimes if I go over something and I, I flub up something in lab, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll at some point see that mistake coming back uh, on an assignment. But at any rate. All right, today we're going to talk about mobile, de uh, mobile development a little bit. And... Um, this, in my mind, is, is, well, not in my mind, I mean, it's just, it's pretty hard to argue, is a, uh, a field that, that, that's exploding, will continue to explode, nowhere near to have peaked, all right? Um, depending on what statistics you read, um, mobile browsing to websites constitutes approximately 10% of all website traffic, and... Um, is that that number is only going to go up, all right? Um, what I want to do first is briefly present a bit of an overview of the of the world of mobile, all right? And then drill down more specifically into the area of web development uh, in a mobile environment, all right? First of all, uh, when, when an organization is looking to put some content out on the web, in general, there are two broad approaches that can be taken as far as mobile goes. What do you suppose those two broad areas of how to deploy content for mobile users are? Yes? Okay. Okay. Well, that's a good point. The statement was, was, uh, was uh, localization, uh, location aware. In other words, have your application know where you are. And that is definitely a goal of good mobile development. I guess I'm looking at it in, in different terms, um, though. Um, if I was putting content out on the web, all right, I would, in, in essence, have two choices. And interestingly enough, these two choices... Um, typically turn into doing both of them, <laughs> all right? So in a way, it's not really even a choice, but um, it, it's two environments in which stuff on the web can, can exist for mobile devices. The first of which is called uh, to develop apps. There's an app for that. You know, we've all seen the commercial. The second is to develop mobile websites. All right, that's your two basic strategies for getting content out there. Now, the interesting thing is, is for any number of reasons, and we'll probably get into this a little bit, I don't want to steal all my thunder from the mobile web development class that I'm offering, but I also want to hopefully give you enough of a taste to make you interested in wanting to go see it. Remember, I talked about the movie and the sequel and all that, you know. Uh, so, so I do want to give some sort of information 
to, to sort of present a context before we go into it in, in more detail. What's the difference between an app and a mobile website? Okay. Right. An app is something that you would have to download and install on your particular device. A mobile website is something that you'd simply browse to using a browser, just like you'd browse to a website, um, just like you'd browse to any website. Okay. Very true. What are some of the implications of, of that difference? And what, what, what are some of the differences between apps and mobile websites? Yes? Okay. okay. The manner in which they developed it are, are different. Apps are typic typically done uh, in the case of iOS, which is the Apple, iPad, iPhone, that sort of thing. It's done in a language called Objective-C. In the Android area, it is done in Java. And mobile websites are your plain, are your HTML and web stuff. So HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP maybe, ASP.NET maybe, and so on. What's another difference between the two? Sometimes apps cost money and, and, and typically mobile websites are free. That's, that's a true statement. Yes. Ah, very good. Apps can do more because they can access the, the uh, characteristics of the particular site, uh, a particular device that, that you're using. Um, mobile websites can do that too a little bit, but mobile websites can't do it as much as a mobile application can. All right, so as far as integrating with a camera, integrating with your contacts list, integrating with all those things, the resources associated with your mobile device apps can, can be a little more rich in the way that they interact with those. Why do you suppose that is? There's definitely a reason for all these observations that we're making. And we've hinted at that, but we haven't come out and said it. Yes. Okay. Uh, the 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 mo uh, again. The statement was that mobile apps tend to be more targeted to a specific function as opposed to a website, which a mobile website, which is more like just a regular website, and that apps are more targeted to the device specifically. You want to add to that, anyone? Yes. Apps are productivity driven. Oh, I'm thinking of about a million example counter examples to that, but <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I, I think I, I think that 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 kind of goes along with what what was said before is that uh, apps are typically uh, more specifically targeted to some piece of functionality where a mobile website is is more more general. But the one thing that we've hinted at all along is that with apps, apps are written for a specific device. All right? In other words, if I go out and find a app for an iPhone that's great and I have an Android phone, I'm out of luck. I can't install it and run it. So that's that, that's sort of the reason behind all these things. The reason that an app 
can do more with the device and do more with the characteristics of the device is because it's written specifically for some certain kind of device. All right? As opposed to HTML, which is a generic, very generic language that can work on all sorts of different devices. It can work on phones. It can work on Nintendo DSs. It can work on Xboxes. It can work on desktop computers and so on. So apps are written for a specific platform. <coughs> Mobile websites theoretically should be available to anyone with a browser. All right. That means that if I was an organization and I wanted to um, get some of my content out, all right, if I wanted really good coverage, I would need to publish an Apple version of it and an Android version of it, all right? So more or less twice the work, all right? And again, the one thing that I've said over and over again is people in IT hate doing duplicated work. All right? They hate doing that. Well, why do they do that then? Well, they do that for most of the reasons that folks discussed here. That the fact is, is if you write something specific for a platform, you can take advantage more of the characteristics of that platform and do more with it as opposed to a general solution. All right? The second thing is, is you should take this statement, anyone with a browser, with at least one big old giant grain of salt, right? Because we know even in the desktop world that there can be issues with websites between different browsers. Well, that, those sort of compatibility issues sort of, you know, uh, snowball and, and become much greater when you start talking about a mobile environment. All right, different versions of Android. What about the one or two people in the world that have a Windows phone? What about Blackberry and, and so on that don't fit into those things? How, how do they work? And, and theoretically it should work, but we all know that in practice uh, it won't necessarily work. So to start out in the mobile world, we identify again, there are apps and there are mobile websites. And all the observations that people made were very good about the difference between the two. Um, for the purposes of this class, I think the important thing to remember about the differences between the two is that apps are written for specific platforms and therefore can, can do more within those platforms because it's doing something specific for that platform as opposed to something that's generic that that's, can run on any sort of machine. So you can do more with an app than you can typically with uh, a mobile website. Mobile websites theoretically give you the ability to write your code once, put it out there, and have anyone be able to access that. But we know that there's a big gap between the theoretical and, and the practical. So what's an organization to do? Well, it's not clear necessarily at this point in time which one of these two is the way to go. All right. So most organizations hedge their bets and do all of the above. Right. For example, if you were to go to CNN, all right, CNN, there's a mobile version of CNN site. All right. There's also an iPhone app for CNN. There's also an Android app for CNN. All right. So organizations hedge their bets. And this is one of those things that uh, time will tell which one of these continues to be more popular and which one, of these, which one of these grows and continues to be more popular. It's like when VCRs first came out, right? Beta and VHS wasn't clear who was going to be the winner, right? And at some point, uh, VHS, for whatever reason, became the standard that was used and, and beta sort of fell into a more of a niche market uh, where there, there were some people that were fans of it, but the society as a whole kind of rejected it. On the other hand, it is possible to have two technologies kind of sit side by side, right? Um, you know, you can point to any of them. Different gaming platforms coexist, not necessarily that one's going to drive out the other. 
um, uh, DVDs and Blu-rays. You know, Blu-ray technology has come out, but that hasn't really killed DVDs, at least not yet. All right. And so therefore, sort of this two strategies in doing mobile de web development, um, for the foreseeable future, most companies are hedging their bets. And, 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 the, you know, and we have classes in both uh, in our new mobile curriculum. All right. So apps, we're not going to talk about really anymore too much. And we're going to focus on mobile websites. All right. Now, mobile websites are developed using the same tools that we use regular, that we develop regular uh, websites with, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. All right. Now, what is the difference? What are some of the differences in accessing a website via a mobile device versus accessing it via a desktop browser? All right, number one is obviously the screen size slash resolution. Screen size, you know. This here is a pretty small monitor. But it's giant compared to my mobile phone's screen. And this is a fairly big mobile phone. But again, you know, a fraction of the size of even a small monitor. So what does that mean? What's the implications of that? So we're on a smaller screen. Yes. Okay, number one, buttons instead of links, maybe. And again, that's a good specific uh, suggestion. In general terms, you know, the size of links to click on. Um, with a mouse, I can very precisely go and touch what I want to touch, you know. With my big old giant hand, sometimes I hit six links when I go and touch on it, and I have to be very careful for that. So that's a design consideration. The navigation needs to be different, all right? Because, again, because of the screen size and because of a second factor, the way that the people interact with them. So the way people interact with it, touching the screen as opposed to using a, a very much more precise pointer to do that um, uh, is an implication as well. What's another implication of the smaller screen? Right, right. You need to on a desktop too, right? But uh, readability becomes a bigger issue. So in terms of the use of colors, fonts, and sizes become important, all right? Simply because the screen's smaller, all right? How so? Pictures have to be different. I, I know that like when you're looking at it, you know, right. like this big, you know, it's like right. looking at it. Okay. Sizes of, of images. That's, that's a great example. For again, the, the size of the screen impacts that. What about the lay? Oh, go ahead. Okay. The aspect ratio could be very different as well. Yeah. I mean, in my case, I think my phone is, if you were to compare it, the, the, monitor is still a rectangle, but it's probably closer to a square. This is a very much stretched out rectangle. So the aspect ratio is going to be, be different. What about the layout of a page? How does that matter because we have a 
a smaller screen. Yep. Right. Typically, as far as layout goes, most mobile, one column. In other words, with a wider screen, you can easily put things side by side and it, it fits just fine and it looks good and it, it is usable. It's very hard to, de uh, to develop a good mobile multiple column um, site. So typically, if you look at most mobile sites, they're going to be one column. Yes. Okay, that's a good, qu uh, good point. More collapsible content. And what do I mean by collapsible? The ability to expand and, and contract. Uh, let's, let's bring up this. Let's bring up Amazon, because I know Amazon does that a lot. Provided I can remember. Here, let's go. Let's go and let's look at the difference between Amazon site, uh, desktop site, and their mobile site. Their desktop site. When I go to the home page, all right. Again, we can notice a bunch of things. We can notice. items, multiple columns, and so on. When we go to the mobile site, notice it is one column. All right. I guess that's as zoomed in as it can be. One column, and as was noted, it's collapsible, so I can click on that and see more, or I can hide it. And again, that's, you can do that on a desktop too, but it becomes a lot more important in a mobile environment because the real estate is at such a premium. All right. Any other observations about mobile site versus a desktop site? Wow. Very good. Yep. We're going to we're going to note that all the floating flexible sort of things that we did are going to become more important uh when we do this. We're we're not going to be using rigid sort of defined layouts. We're going to use percentages and we're going to float stuff and so on. Again, we can do that in a desktop environment, but in a desktop environment you can you can sort of make the judgment is this appropriate use is this not in mobile it's just about always going to be uh, that you know for one thing how big is a mobile screen well first of all that depends on how big uh, what you're defining a mobile screen is you know iPads have pretty big screens you know this phone has a pretty big screen a basic phone that just has a simple web browser might have a very tiny screen all right so. Again, uh, you have to be careful uh, when you define that, and therefore, we're not going to be doing too many absolutes. We're going to be do, uh, using uh, uh, flexible things. Other differences. Browsing speed. How's the browsing speed compare on a mobile device versus a, a desktop machine? Typically, it's going to be slower. All right. Um, so, you've got to be real careful about like images, especially like maybe background images, right? Because if background images really are just there for sort of decoration, well, I don't know if we want that luxury, you know. 
That's why it's funny. Ba a few years back, you know, some people raised the question, gee, is download speed that important for website development anymore because everyone's on faster things? And it's like, yeah, it's always going to be, you know? As soon as, uh, soon as the, 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 tech, the, the hardware improves to be able to handle it faster, we're going to be sending more stuff over, and it's always going to be an issue to consider how long it takes to download. All right? Let me think if there's something else. I thought there was at least one other thing. Oh, there is one other. Oh, go ahead. Availability of plugins, excellent. You know, uh, most notably, no flash on iPhones. All right, but uh, again, um, that's definitely an issue, uh, the plugins and all that. Now, there's one difference between navigating and, and, and accessing a mobile site uh, versus a desktop site that has nothing to do with the actual hardware itself or the software, but has something to do with the user. Okay. What do you suppose that might be? Let me ask you this question. How many of you have visited Loring Community College's website? All right. What would you visit it for? Enroll in classes, so on. How many of you, you have used the mobile site? What would you use that for? Get on Angel? All right. Okay. Interesting. Uh, Maybe, well, well, we were talking, or you guys were talking before class about how this class for at least some members is, is much like an afternoon at the circus or a day at Cedar Point, that it's so much fun. So maybe folks in this class don't do it. But my guess, my, especially after the events of last week, my guess is that many people visit our site to look to see if the campus is closed or not on the days that it's iffy, right? Can you imagine if you were driving home from work, for example, and, you know, uh, if you remember last week, they, they closed the campus sort of in stages at, at you know, in the morning they, they said, well, classes are canceled till 4, and it, at, then at a certain point they said, well, the whole day classes are canceled. So, can you imagine, and, you know, you, you, you're at work, you have an evening class, and you had a hard day uh, at work, and you're thinking, hmm. I thought I heard LC was canceled until 4, but I wonder if my class is open yet. So driving home at a red light, of course, where you're safe, <laughs> you might open up a browser and look at LC's website to see that. All right? Why? You don't want to drive home if you have to go back out, let's say, hypothetically, and, 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 and go to class. And you certainly don't want to come in here if the class is canceled, right? You, you'd want to then just go directly home. So. I guess what I'm saying is, you know, that's one example. But in almost every organization, you can think of the fact that the goals of the user changes with regards to the mobile site as compared to the desktop site. All right? How would the goal, say, of a visitor to CNN's regular site might be different than a visitor to CNN's mobile site? What, what, what are things that they may be looking for that are different? Maybe not specific content, but qualities that they're looking for. Yeah. Mobile users would want to know immediate, headline, important stuff, right this minute sort of information. So I would imagine that their mobile site got a lot of traffic during the storm last week, you know, as people were looking up to hear what the progress of the storm was and if there was any news related to that and all. All right. Now, how might that experience be different than someone that is uh, visiting CNN site, the full version of the site, the desktop version of the site? What might the desktop user be looking for? Yeah, sitting back and maybe drilling in more detail. Maybe going in and not just looking at the serious news stories of the day, but looking in, uh, you know, who got kicked off so you think you can dance and, 
this and that. And I, I really doubt, now there probably are some reality show addicts that that's probably the most important thing, and maybe when they wake up in the morning they, they fire up their phone and look at it. But I would guess that the typical user, that's more of a, oh, I'm sitting back, like you would read the newspaper, more at a leisurely pace. So again, think of the difference between this. One is very well focused in, I want to know the top headlines. I want to know what's happening this moment. I imagine like tomorrow during the election results, you know, people are going to be going and visiting that site because they just want to see, you know, who won this state, who won that state, and so on. As opposed to maybe afterwards, people getting online to read the detail analysis where all the experts tell you no matter what happened, they'll explain to you exactly why it happened, even though like two days before they couldn't explain what was going to happen, right? I always love that, you know. The weatherman is never right about, you know, tomorrow's forecast, but he always has a great explanation of what happened yesterday, you know. Uh, at any rate, um, so I guess this is more of a mindset between the user. This really doesn't have anything to do with the specific uh, uh, hardware or software, except to say that mobile users are... probably have different goals. That is, if you're visiting LC's mobile website, maybe you need to look up someone's phone number. Maybe you need to check to see if your professor emailed you back. Maybe you need to see if the, cl if the school is closed. Maybe you need to see what hours the counselors uh, are, are available or whatever. Very focused on some specific task. Whereas, maybe you'd visit LC's webpage from a desktop to find out, like, gee, should I major in this or should I major in that? You know, that sort of thing. Now, one other thing that, that comes into play here, again, is this is getting back to, to some of your first comments about some of the neat things that you can do on the mobile that you can't do on a desktop device, or you can't do as well, let's put it that way. Um, and that's a little more advanced, but I do want to sort of bring that up. Because so far we've talked sort of about the limitations of mobile, and said, well, a smaller screen, harder to hit the links, blah, blah, slower downloads, and so on. But there's some advantages to that. The one that was mentioned that, that's, that's a great example is the location awareness. All right, um, You can tell, uh, uh, both a desktop website and a mobile website can tell where you are. All right, But a mobile website can tell with a much more precise uh, location all right, uh, as compared to a, uh, to a, uh, a desktop. The desktop uh, is probably going to rely on, the, the, the website is probably going to rely on IP detection. All right? It's going to look at your IP and say, hmm, I know that internet service provider, and I think they're based out of Illyria, so yeah, this person's probably coming from Illyria. All right? As opposed to, you know, a, um, a, um, with a mobile device, you can uh, actually drill down and show exactly where someone is. Uh, let me see if I can find that example. There's a good example that actually we actually covered in um, our um, my mobile class. Find it real quick. Alright. 
that just shows a lot of latitude and longitude. Unless you are a sailor, that won't really tell you anything. All right, here we go. Here's a map. Display the results on the map. Here I'm accessing this on a desktop. And the map knows that I'm in Illyria. All right? So it knows that I'm in Illyria, you know, and it shows that I'm there. But I'm not really there, am I? I'm not, I'm not on Broad Street in Illyria. That's implied on the center of the map, you know. Let's go and view that same page on my phone, which, of course, has all the phone things in it, you know. I, it, it was funny. For a while, there was a glitch in that, and it would uh, my, my home browser would always direct me to uh, German Google. They, for some reason, they thought I was in Germany based on the IP. It was like a hiccup in the IP detection. Um, so let's look here. Here I'm going to try the same thing on my phone. And we'll see different results. It knows that we are on Abbey Road. It might be a little off but it's still much more precise than this guy is. So, we can talk about the limitations of mobile, but really to do a great job developing a real good mobile, whether it be application or website, you can also like use some of the advantages of mobile. All right? um, it's funny, anytime a new technology comes out, initially people use it to imitate the old technologies. Right? You know, when, you know, th there was radio back in the old days. Now, again, this isn't my personal recollection. This is just from what I've read and heard, all right? But there used to be, uh, there used to be, you know, uh, you know, stories, you know, shows on the radio with, with uh, you know, uh, telling stories and that sort of thing. And when TV first came out, a lot of the TV were the old radio people doing their same bit except on TV, all right? And as we found out, that's not necessarily the best thing that you can do on TV, right? You can take advantages of the stuff that makes TV different than radio. And it's not just a limitation, it's actually an improvement. And it's the same sort of thing with mobile devices. At first, the goal of mobile devices was like, okay, I'm going to take a website and make it work on a small screen. But as now developers are getting more sophisticated, they can say, you know what? It's not just a limitation, it's not just a smaller screen, it's a different beast altogether. And if we code things to take advantage of its unique characteristics, then now we're really on to something. Now we're not just duplicating the older technology in a, in a new format. We're actually going beyond it and doing things that this guy can do that that guy can't do. All right? So, all right, where does that leave us? Well, in talking about, um, to, to sort of conclude this, this part of it and, and, and transition into the second part of it, um, to start out anyhow, one of the big things is that our mobile sites will probably be more simple than our full-blown desktop sites. All right? More simple in what way? Well. Single column as opposed to multiple column. Very much a focus on readability. Bigger buttons that you can click on. Bigger links that you can click on. More carefully chosen content. All right. Et cetera. All right. Now, the question is how do we achieve this? Or better yet, 
How do we achieve it so that we can accommodate both the desktop people and the mobile people? Well, again, there's a couple of strategies to do that. All right. One thing that you can do is you can actually have separate sites. And you can have your web server work sort of as a traffic cop to send the user to one version of the site or the other. Right? We're not going to really focus on that technology because that requires server-side scripting, which we really don't talk about much in this class. But effectively, the server is smart enough to be able to look at the request that comes in and say, hey, this is on a phone, so I'm going to send them to the mobile version of the site. This is on a desktop browser, so I'm going to send them to the desktop version of the site. Now immediately again, as software developers who have better things to do than writing all these different versions of things, we're going to think, gee, does that mean double work? Not necessarily double work means more work, but not necessarily double, because there's things that you can do to sort of like uh, write code that's reusable that you can use here and that you can use the same code over there. So it's not entirely bad news, all right? It, but by thinking through the problem, you can actually come up with, with uh, sharing some of your code between the two, even though they are separate sites, all right? So that's one technique that we're not going to talk about. The techniques we're going to talk about are what are called responsive web pages, responsive sites, sometimes adaptive, all right? And these are web pages that are smart enough to know where they're being run and change the way they look depending on what environment they're in, all right? Good deal, huh? You know? This doesn't require server-side scripting. We can do most techniques in responsive web design using only client-side tools, that is, only HTML and CSS. Some things we might put a little JavaScript in, but we can do a lot as far as responsive with just a little bit of an extension of the stuff that we've learned in this class so far. And that's what our focus is going to be, all right? Um, I spent a little longer on the introduction than, than I had intended to. Um, what we will go over Wednesday, we'll be looking at specifically what we can do to make our pages responsive. So make our pages smart enough to know where it's being run. And look this way if you're being run on a mobile device, look this way if you're run on a desktop. Now, you folks have already had a little bit of practice doing that, right? even though it wasn't put in these terms. Because the last couple of assignments, you've been creating two versions of your page. One that looks one way, one that looks another way. Now, the only difference is, is there's no um, intelligence in your page to switch between the two depending on the device it is. You manually go and switch the style sheets. But that's sort of like the starting point for developing responsive websites, is developing sites where there's a great separation between the presentation and the content, where all your content's in the HTML and everything about the appearance is in the CSS. Because if we can do that, we can swap out those CSS files depending on the circumstances, and we can make the page look any way we want. We can make it look simpler in a mobile environment. We can look at more, make it look more elaborate in a desktop environment. Now, if you can't wait and you want spoilers on this particular topic, what you can do is go to Angel, and I'll point out a great resource to kind of get you started. Under our class, CISS 216, if we look in the resources section, here's some mobile resources about responsive web design. 
All right. And this really sort of sets the field about how we can make our pages responsive. One of the keys to this is what's called the media query in CSS. The media query is what allows us to take one page and make it look different if we're viewing it on a screen and different still if we are printing it out, for example. But we can also use this technique to make our pages look different in a mobile environment. So, this covers some examples of stuff that we can do to make our pages look different. The way forward, fluid, well, where is this? Kind of messed it up. Fluid grids, that is not using absolute things, but having things fluid. Flexible images, point that you raised, by flexible, I mean images that aren't given a certain size, but are given a certain percentage of the screen as their width. And then finally, media queries are the three main technical things that you need to do to uh, do this. And these are the techniques that we'll be delving into uh, next time. Now, you might ask yourself, I, or say to yourself, gee, I don't have a mobile phone uh, to test this. I don't have a smartphone. Or how could you possibly test on all the different combinations of things? That is where the Opera Mobile Emulator comes in. The Mobile Emulator is a piece of software that allows us to make these little virtual phones that we can test our web pages on. So that's the way a browser would look. I could, for example, go and drag a web page onto it, and it would show us how it would look in this environment. Uh, it doesn't look very good, right? All right. Uh, but again, that wasn't a goal of mine when I was developing this. So we'll talk about that next time as well. All right. We'll see you up in lab.